scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Influence is the ability The ability to compel the ideology of a man, the ideology of a people, the ideology of a territory, the ability to compel the ideology of a territory to bend towards a particular direction without using human force and cruelty is called influence if i'm able to do something to you that compels you to adjust to my paradigm of thinking that's an influence i like the 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 uh, um, the um, poster that was created by the media department you see that match the, the matches one having the fire and all he needs to do is go close enough he will compel all the rest to catch that fire we call that influence the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies to institutionalize your ideology such that even those who do not agree with you will be compelled to walk in that reality this is what influence is the bible says it was noised abroad that jesus was in town and all kinds of people found themselves around those who didn't like him those who were critics those who were indifferent those who were passionately loyal for reasons they could not explain they found themselves the bible says he went up the mountain they still followed him that's influence listen the key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism as we know the key to kingdom advancement is influence the ability to bring a territory under like a spell you bring a territory under an understanding you compel people to think in a certain way you compel the economy of a territory to operate in a certain trajectory it's called influence did you know that there is a level of influence you can exert on a territory such that even those who do not believe in God will be forced to adopt certain languages in their English because that becomes the language of communication. It's called influence. Once upon a time, there were no networks in Nigeria. Not one, aside from Nitel. But a communications company came and marketed a proposal and right now it has become an addiction. People literally cry when their phones get missing. And they are on their way to go and do welcome back. They, they, have, they have influenced you so much, they created a package called welcome back. In other words, when you run away, I create a provision to come under my spell. Now, that's influence. There are people in the village who cannot spell Jesus, but they know Coca-Cola. Influence. Every tribe in the world knows Coca-Cola. The name is Coca-Cola. No tribe calls anything by their own. It's called Coca-Cola. The three most influential names, brands, right, in the world, although it's been upgraded now, 
number one is jesus number two michael jackson before he died number three coca-cola think about that right now the most influential brand in the world is google apple followed by google the kingdom of god will have to ascend in such a way and a manner that it will no longer just be one-on-one -on -one evangelism the territory forces people all roads must lead to the cross all roads no matter how people try to do it we come to a point where our thoughts become that which is aligned to the kingdom the songs become that which is aligned to the kingdom if they must crack any joke it must have a paradigm with the kingdom you won't do see the difference between the holy spirit and saddam hussein is this both of them try to exact influence but one brings his influence with physical threats are we together but the holy ghost reveals to you the excellency of his way are you getting the point now he shows you the all-surpassing superiority of walking with him there is a level give us micah chapter 4 please one and two and then i begin to explain to us very quickly the things that the lord has put in my heart micah chapter 4 one and two it's a scripture that speaks powerfully about the prophetic state of the church can we read it together one to read but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills it says and people shall what flow to it listen he never said they will call the people look at this he never said they will call the people something will happen upon that mountain that will force people literally it's a compelling power they will flow to it he says and how many nations please help me how many nations it says and many nations shall come and say come let us go where will the evangelism happen among themselves an ability will make them to start drawing themselves and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob he says and he will what teach us he will change our mindsets he will adjust our ideologies he says and we will walk in his path for the lord shall go forth from zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem this is what will happen let me tell you the church is not a weakling there is an energy and the ability of the ecclesia god's very church we will arise in a mighty way and shock creation the key is not to take the world i see a lot of people dreaming and say i'm going to take every world i tell them that's not how when god says you will take over the earth the key is to create a prototype of your agenda in a territory that's the key the kingdom always spreads like a seed there are people who have not done well where god where they are domiciled and they are thinking of no 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 the key is to plant a prototype of your ideology and that becomes the platform the template from which you will influence other territories you must jesus christ came to israel jerusalem created a prototype of his life and then compelled certain people called the sent ones and began to send them through regions so everywhere they went they were envoys of those ideologies backed up by the government that sent them this is the key to strategic kingdom advancement let me tell you something it's not just by traveling planting a church in london uk there's a time and a place for that but the greatest key to maximum influence is to be able to represent the ideology of a, of the christ so strategically in a region that every other region can look at it as a template that's how hillsong spread abroad they stood in australia and did something so striking this year, Zaria will be a place of pilgrimage. I tell you, you will see week after the same way you go to Jerusalem. Write this down. You will see people trooping in, just waiting. Because it's the mountain of the Lord. The place. 
where God has chosen to build his habitation. It's an election of grace. Are we together? Isaiah chapter 60. Let's start from verse 1, but my focus is 3. Isaiah 60. Arise, he says, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. He says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. Don't ever let anything you read on the newspaper scare you this year. God has shown me this year. It's a glorious year for the church. Write it down. Believe me, I'm telling you. It's, it's not a... It, it has never been a thing of confusion about the drop in oil price and all of these things. This is something we said years ago and we're insulted for it. But let me tell you, you will see the glory of the church emerge. See, Satan moves by ministering fear fear is a spirit are we together now and the bible tells us that as a man thinketh so he is and so the media while in a in in a state of sincerity to address what they call the state of the nation have gone to market an ideology that makes people think oh this year i don't know about you but this year is a year for me of multiplied grace and influence the Bible says when you see darkness that rejoicing is a sign there will be a separation this year like Egypt and Goshen that on one side there was darkness but then on another side they were not even aware of what was happening ah don't call what they call conspiracy conspiracy he said when men say that means you are not men when men say there is a casting down those who have been altered by ability of the spirit will say there is a lifting up I refuse to make any declaration that is against the word of God. No government, no newspaper will deceive me into agreeing with the agenda of darkness. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Listen, it says, and gross darkness the people, but upon, but the Lord shall arise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon you. Oh, hallelujah. Let's read verse 3. This is my scripture. Goodness. It says, and Gentiles shall what? Stop. It didn't say, I will go and call them. Makatala Sotaya. Something will happen upon my life this year. The wisdom of the spirit. The multiplication of his grace. It says, it will compel Gentiles. They will come by themselves. Gentiles will come. Not to you. To your light something you carry will compel attention it has nothing to do with whether they like you or not there is a level of prosperity you can enter there is a level of the anointing access to the dimensions of the spirit it will compel nations to come and then it gets better it says and their kings those that represent governments those that represent mountains it says their kings will come your light will start rising listen was it not in your bible when solomon's glory started rising every other person came but the queen of sheba refused to come she had a pride but that light was so bright the queen of sheba had to take gifts and come and say who is this solomon listen the bible says when she came to solomon she saw the arrangement of his table and saw everything she said half of what was told me he said i was not told half of what i'm seeing now he said when she saw everything there was no spirit in her it's god's ability god's ability is working in me is working in me is God's ability 
God's ability is working in me. It's God's ability. It is God's ability working in me. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Mm, we are believers in this place. We are believers in this place. Listen, this is the year you must take God seriously. When God speaks, he's not your lecturer, he's not suggesting. When God speaks, he's not your boss in office. When God speaks, he looks at himself first, whether he can defend what he's about to say, and then he will say it. He speaks on the strength of his might. Have you not read that God looked in heaven to find who was greater than him? Because he wanted to make a dangerous statement that he could not lie. So he was looking for a witness that was greater than him and not finding any, he swore by himself. What is our expectation in this season? Some of these things I'm going to be reading out were the exact words of the Lord as it came to me. The Lord told me that in this season, he will be granting us supernatural access to the following. Please write supernatural access to number one revelations there will be a depth of revelation we will break into a spiritual fountain of revelation hallelujah and this is the scripture of the lord in fact it, it was before the scripture came it was an impression upon my heart and the bible tells us remember in scripture listen please remember in scripture when the Bible says two men at a place called Emmaus. They were walking and Jesus was with them. But they did not know he was the one. That the word is near you does not mean you understand it. That you are reading it. They were with Jesus. The Christ. The living word. The resurrected Christ. He was walking with them but they did not know he was the one. Listen. Many people just carry Bible and think they are growing spiritually. Others think because they are looking at it, they convince themselves that they are growing. Others have memory verses and crime verses, which is not bad. But they think because of it, it's a sign that they are growing. And the Bible says, when they were at table, he broke the bread. And their eyes were open. Listen, this is the year God will give us access to light. Light. Illumination. Illumination. He says, you will arise and shine for your light is come. Not because you are tired of sitting down. There is a light that God will give you that will drive out certain darkness in your life forever. Forever. He will give us access to anointings. There are graces. There are abilities of the spirit. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. There is nobody who is doing great things for God who does it by the strength of the flesh. No. No. There is an anointing that is responsible for every result you see in the kingdom. There is an anointing. It's not about struggling. There is a grace. Your own labor is to enter that dimension. But once you are there, you are there. Are we together? There is a level of grace that God wants to multiply in your life. Not just, please personalize this thing. I'm taking out time to teach it because I want you to believe it. You must believe that in my life there is a level of grace. There is a level of the anointing. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. It doesn't make the difference. The anointing is the difference. A handkerchief with the anointing upon all of a sudden becomes supernatural. A donkey with an anointing upon it all of a sudden becomes a prophet oh come on the anointing is never trivialize the anointing and the effect of it in your life there are doors only certain kinds of graces can open are we together we must believe God to multiply anointings in our lives 
God will give us access to people. Very important. God will give us access to resources. God will give us access to opportunities. To the end that we will birth greater levels of salvation, encounters, transformation, and revival. He will supply all these things to the end that will be able to birth through the spirit greater levels of salvation, greater levels of encounters, greater levels of transformation, greater levels of revivals. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. In this very season, there's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain. They will break every chain, break every chain. Please write it down quickly. There are five areas that I want us to focus on this year. Please listen five areas very quickly for us to maximize the prophetic word that the Lord has given there are five areas that the Lord would want us to focus and pay attention number one on our spiritual growth the first area of focus that you must contend in the spirit that there must be multiplication of grace is on your spiritual growth please listen this year there will be multiplied grace for notable spiritual progress are, are you listening to me that you can look by december and know that you 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 entered a dimension in the spirit there must be notable spiritual growth in your life this year please make sure you write it down god is releasing grace for notable spiritual growth You must increase your passion for God. I'm teaching you how to maximize the demands on your own path. You must, you must take advantage of this grace and increase your passion for God. Increase your passion for the things of God. And increase your passion for the house of God. This is not the year where you miss koinonia anyhow for reasons say there was rain all my clothes there was no iron to i no 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 there must be a desperation for god a desperation for the things of god a desperation for the house of god it was david that said i'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house have you read that scripture that he so passionately loved the house of god listen the foundation of the quality experience of the prophetic word of the Lord this year is hinged upon your increased passion for God God told me something and I'm going to say it exactly as he said this is what he said he said tell my people to give me time and take me seriously I wrote it down tell my people to give me time God is asking for time this year listen because all you have in your life is time Whoever you give your time to, you have given your life to. So don't say you have given your life to God and not give him time. This is not the year of miserly time. You, you, you sleep for 10 hours, use 10 hours watching films, which is alright. But this is the year you must invest in his presence. Invest in his presence like a business and see the returns that comes from you. increased passion for God your passion must increase for spiritual activities prayer and fasting the study of the word this is not the year for laziness is God speaking to us your prayer life must jack back if 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 you know your prayer life is dying please don't let anybody deceive you there is trouble are we together if anything that attacks your prayer life in 2016 
is the greatest attack from the kingdom of darkness men ought always to pray Luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint prayer is the place where people generate strength and capacity you can know when a man has the absence of prayer there is nothing that can replace the energy that prayer brings please give God time tell your neighbor give God time this year talk to him talk to him seriously give God time it's a strong admonition say give God time in 2016 don't be busy looking for money running around looking for money looking for job thank God for those things there is a place for them but brothers and sisters I call you to a place where you will hit the jackpot for this year invest in his presence the presence of God will give you what money will never give you I know we used to nod when I say but many of us don't believe it his presence prayer and fasting don't eat away your destiny this year prayer and fasting quality fasting done with revelation not compulsion to prove to people no 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 don't allow religion to destroy you this year but you must pray brothers and sisters maximize your night time i've taught you this thing it's just that many you see ba many of us don't take seriously the word of the lord that comes if you are obedient to the truth of god's word you'll be amazed to see the results in your life maximize your night times i have learned this is a mystery of tremendous spiritual power the bible says and the evening came and the morning he never mentioned morning before evening there is a mystery of the night time you are alone with worship even if it's for 30 minutes people are snoring around and you are praying lord i establish realities i command my morning i decree and declare it's my year of supernatural influence it's my year of multiplied grace and you are speaking and inspiration is coming and you are writing you soak yourself in worship you create like a spiritual magnetic field you get up in the morning and you are compelling things that people cannot understand do you not know that the morning is like a woman that has a womb go and read your bible it was a prophet that let us know that things can be planted in the womb of the morning it gives the morning the character of a woman and just like a man plants a seed in the womb of his wife and expects her to deliver the delivery time is your daytime the night is when you impregnate your day with prophecy and allow it to deliver to you realities many people let me tell you the engine room of real power is to pray your secret place especially night prayers and you walk in the morning and you encounter miracles and breakthroughs he told job has thou commanded thy morning not has thou commanded thy night hallelujah this year you must invest in quality teaching and materials please get all the koinonia messages you can some of us pride ourselves around distributing koinonia messages to people which is very good but never listen to it ourselves you carry it around and you are happy to be a, a, an, a, an evangelist you are distributing it around ah you mean you know apostle ah, ah, apostle i can't even call him now you are busy marketing which is okay but you are dying don't forget the bible says let it not be that i haven't preached i myself god knows how many times i sit down and soak in koinonia messages i'm blasting in tongues and listening to them and where apostle joshua selman is prophesying i get down on my knees and i'm receiving it for my life please take your destiny seriously there is a message for everything every major thing you are looking for you find out that the flesh is growing in you there is a message locate one flog yourself back to alignment you are dying spiritually 
find a message you are having one a get miracle service message and fast forward it to the place where prophecy started and see please engage the word this year tell your neighbor engage the word do it engage the word the same way you engage a man in a conversation put pressure on the word to produce results for you don't sit down and say oh, if god wants it to work i've been doing it no you are not work it work it work out your salvation with fear and trembling so your spiritual life i'm determined this year that my spiritual life will enter a dimension that has never been god has shown me the possibilities he can go with me if i'm if i'm interested and he asked me whether i'm interested what do you think my answer is my goodness lead me lord i will follow lead me lord i will go you have called me and i will answer lead me lord i will go god is calling us to a higher level never be satisfied with where you are are you hearing what i'm saying please write it down write it i refuse to be satisfied with where i am i know you've seen some results in your spiritual life you've seen the prophetic grace you've seen uh, an anointing you've seen some level of result but it's child's play compared to where god wants to take you if you are interested and you stay through with god he will surprise you this year james chapter 4 verse 8 says that when we draw near to him he says he will draw near to us when you draw near to him you must take that step with expectation the second area of focus this year for us to maximize this prophetic word is the area of mental transformation mental transformation romans chapter 12 verse 2 listen listen i've taught us again and again that the quality of a man's life is at the mercy of his ideology this year i want us to insist that we are going to lay aside every stumbling block we've held on to that is stopping us please those outside i hope we're listening can you shout hallelujah those outside praise the lord make sure that you pay the price take advantage of the grace of god and contend for transformation the bible says and be not conformed to this world the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age be not conformed it says refuse it reject it reject their way of talking reject their behavior reject their way of responding to life it's a choice it says be not conformed to this world then it says but be ye transformed right transform how by the renewing of your mind that's what the bible says that we are transformed not by wishing by the renewing of our minds focus on sustaining a renewed and transformed mind focus don't say it's like that everybody in your family that poverty mindset must die a natural death this year you must reject it let them hate you no problem reject it don't let people carry their failure and bring it upon you as an impartation don't let anybody tell you financial prosperity is not important don't let anybody tell you doing well in your life is not important you never replace one dimension of kingdom progress for another you can know god and still be poor are we together you can be praying in tongues and still be a bad husband there must be balance that's the true church that is shown to us in revelations 19 you can listen to my message the full gospel i've always frowned at the exaggeration of the body of christ emphasizing one truth to the detriment of another so i'm teaching you on spiritual growth and forgetting the fact that you have children to feed 
you have school fees to pay no god is not that kind of god there must be a balance he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth no exaggeration that's the true church i will never be the preacher who will mislead you to emphasize one area of spiritual growth at the detriment of another you will get balance so that it is okay to serve god and be rich are we together it is okay to serve god and be a ceo and lead we keep preaching all these um religious messages in church that move people closer to god and draw them away from the world and then we become victims of the decisions of those who control these mountains but in this season we reject it we are going like daniels with the anointing of the spirit but we will still enter the system the great commission was go ye into the world not carry a truck to the streets that's all right but it said enter the system go ye into cosmos and influence it with an ideology that's the gospel but you can never rise above and beyond a transformed mind please believe me when i tell you your level of right, life right now is what your mindset has produced for you this is uncomfortably true you must believe it there is something about your understanding that is keeping you where you are from entitlement mentality that makes us believe it is government that should pay us right to those who believe that all they need to succeed in life is to get a job is that really true a job is wonderful i pray for you at the end of the service i'll pray for you but let me tell you a job cannot fund your assignment you know that right a job cannot build a house for you a job can only help you to barely survive exactly what satan wants barely survive so that you never hear god you never sow seeds you never give you are so busy making money you don't have time for the agenda of god i reject that kind of living in the name of jesus christ mary said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man oh god i'm i'm i'm, I'm strange to this kind of experience but god said the power of the highest that's how it will happen so don't sit down wondering will god really change my story will god really wipe my tears are you kidding you've forgotten the god who can change people he said by this time tomorrow listen i believe god oh i told you in this year make sure you insist on being a believer that i receive the word of god don't let the enemy come and steal the seed which is the word of god in january we can all believe two weeks after now you find a lot of people frowning at their convictions as though they were playing games in church mental transformation you must lay down wrong and limiting ideologies lay them down ideologies that let you think that you cannot be a leader where you are ideologies that train you to do things that are not consistent with the ways of god is devilish and you must lay it down My father is wicked. It's not only your father. Many fathers have been wicked. But people triumph through that wickedness. Are we together? Nobody likes me. You are not alone. You are never alone. You are plenty that people don't like. You have to stop giving excuses. Tell your neighbor. Say stop giving excuses. Stop explaining why you should not move forward. There are so many people. They will explain to you. If only I had space. I had a room to myself my prayer life will be back now that you don't have what will you do with the one that is there you must create a strategy i would have fasted but the truth is the way my nutrition is i'm not even sure it's not like i have i understand the program it's just as it comes no those things are flimsy excuses take away those limiting mindsets i live a very supernatural life i don't see impossibility in my life and i don't say it just as a, a, a way of motivation i really do i don't see impossibilities in my life i'm only limited by the voice of the spirit the bible said can two walk together except they agree you and the holy spirit cannot walk together if you don't agree with him god is telling you this is 
what I open up before you are you willing and you say Holy Spirit is just because you didn't grow up in my family uh, uh, lay your hands on your head and pray for one minute and say Lord everything that is resident in my mind that is not of you must give way please pray please pray for as he thinketh in his heart so he is please pray pray out every limiting belief oh I believe God for anything he can take me anywhere he can lift me from the dunghill. This I believe. He can crown me with honor and glory. This I believe. He can bring an anointing in my life. I refuse to let my background limit me. I refuse to let the awareness of where I come from and what has happened in my life limit me those outside are you praying lay your hands on your head i reject it every negative mindset tying down my life every negative mindset tying down my business every negative mindset tying down my education are you praying this is the year i call the devil a liar i reject him i reject him I reject that word it's a choice i choose to believe god i choose to believe god hallelujah don't ever sit back and allow the devil destroy you listen everything you see did not just happen by mistake it takes a man to see what others are not seeing to go where others will not go this is the year don't let people talk you down and lie to you it will take your faith you must believe believe in God and commit yourself don't be afraid of making mistakes are you hearing what I'm saying don't be afraid of making mistakes don't live in this this carefree world where everybody say take it easy and they kill you god is inspiring you to start up a business that can bail your family and people are saying take it easy you know the way nigeria is well please let me tell you something if you if you talk and live like them you will die like them are we together somebody looks at you as a student and says you are 1.5 are you aware of that yet every time you sleep you see God doing great things in your life how shall these things be this is the year to believe and one way to believe is to run away from all those naysayers there are people who are negative by default they are your enemies this year make sure you run away from them intentionally you say, why are you running away from us? It's like you are running. It's not like I am running. I'm leaving you. I intend to grow. Listen. Listen. All this loyalty to people who will destroy your life. We were childhood friends. So what? I intend to grow. Any man that is not seeing what I'm seeing should not be working with me. Are we together? Come. Let me use you for you say, Okay, you are a cameraman. Come. Watch this. Turn. all right move forward let's all move forward go go, go. Move forward look at this his forward is not my forward are we together we are all attempting to move forward it just so happens that for some reason he's unwilling to bend to my direction i'm not your enemy i'm just not going where you are going i'm not saying where you are going is wrong i'm just saying it's not my address are we together please this is the year you must sustain courage to look at people and say no 
I, I'm not a musician. I'm not against your music ministry. But God didn't call me to sing. Please, don't force me to do rehearsal when I'm sleeping. I'm a businessman. I love your music. May God anoint you. I will encourage you. When I make the money, I will support your album. But for now, let me focus. Listen, listen. I know we are laughing. You think I'm playing. This came out of the secret place. Days of intense fasting with full concentration. Not laughing around. It's amazing how many people never make it because of distraction. You're on your way going to do something. You are there singing. And God is saying, I, I already prepared people. See, when you are not in your assigned place, you will always feel secondary. You will find everybody there and not find a space for yourself. You now get up and say, I'm into logistics. You want to be like Aaron. It's not working. Later you say, I think I like her. Look, settle down this year re-edit your mind and find where God has placed you and die there tell yourself it is to die I will die there stop escorting men visionlessly even as a pastor this is the year to know exactly what God told you your assignment is not the great commission are we together the great commission is for everybody settle and find what is the grace what anointing God what did you tell me oh 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 it unto the Lord. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 Still on point two, let's hurry up. Lay aside wrong behavioral traits. We are still on that point two, mental transformation. First Peter 2 verse 1, please give it to us quickly. First Peter 2 verse 1. Anger, envy, pride, bitterness, dishonor, all these traits that have kept you down. This is the year you make up your mind, I'm not gossiping about people. Because I found out everybody I'm gossiping about has moved forward and left me alone. This year, I want to move forward. At least let somebody talk about me. The Bible says, wherefore? Doing what? Laying aside. Laying aside. All malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and what? Evil speaking. There are some people when you sit down close to them, five minutes your spirit is down. Because they, they have what we call evil speakings. Always bad news. Always what someone said. No, you must change. You must change. Anger, you must lay it aside this year. God opened a door, your anger closed it. God opened a door, your anger closed it. Your husband was coming, your anger drove him. Your wife was almost arriving, your anger sent her away. This year, make up your mind that anger will not destroy my destiny. There are people who, do, you were at the verge of breakthroughs, but this anger, rage, that's how we are in our family. Ask my mother, we're all like that. When we're angry, just stay away, please. I want you to maximize this multiplied grace. The one you had last year, it has increased now. So there's no excuse. Maximize the grace and say no to anger. Because it will destroy you. Envy. Envy. You never do anything with your life. You watch people have results and you are looking for what they do. Let me tell you something about envy. It never affects the one who you are talking about or the one you are envious. It's, it's such a frustrating venture. It doesn't touch the... Pe even if it at least let it touch it it's better to fight directly fighting you sit down and tie yourself down and then the unfortunate thing is the bible says the part of the justice as a shining light so for how long will you hold it envy pride this year as a family of faith and as individuals we must run away from pride brothers and sisters pride is a killer are we together? 
believing you can make it without God looking down on others pushing people down to show you are successful no lay it down bitterness there are people who just say I'm not happy why I say this world is a sad world hey you have a long journey a long journey to go say, I'm just sad why is everywhere like this the place is moody and the devil says this is exactly what I'm looking for this year I choose to be joyful the Bible says, rejoice always it didn't say rejoice when you have money rejoice always and in case you forget again I say rejoice. number three the third area the Lord wants us to focus on is our health first Corinthians 6 verse 12 to 20 we don't have the time to read it our health the Bible tells you authoritatively that your body is the temple of the Lord Jesus Christ right everyone say it say my body is the temple of the holy spirit say one more time my body is the temple of the holy spirit listen it honors god for you to take care of your body are we together this year the way you punished your body in 2015 you have to rethink this year are we together it's very important you must live a healthy and a balanced life no laziness and no overstressing yourself that's the balance there are those who are sluggish and lazy spiritually it flows down intellectually it now culminates physically inertia for everything it takes you two days to do what five minutes can do laziness is still an insult to the body and then over stressing yourself hallelujah when you read about the wealth revival you will know that what killed the pioneer of the wealth revival was not necessarily any demonic attack he literally stretched himself to death no matter how busy you are i believe that if i'm not mistaken i probably will may be one of the busiest people among us here but you must still create time to rest you may not have quantity of time but you must have quality eat well god is faithful please eat well this year don't punish yourself you need to add one more ingredient that you just look and say if i add this no what if you don't add it and you die you see you, you think intelligently this year please please we are at different levels but pay serious attention to your health when you really fall sick you will find out that all you have is time and your life are we together you can have all the money in this world if you play with your health MOG all the men of God here listen please find time to rest walk your life out but rest when you preach they will mourn you for seven days and people will continue preaching are we together i shared with you my story when the lord delivered me and showed me told me to look at the crucifix and for the first time i realized i did not die for the world no my name is not jesus my name is joshua selman the hebrew joshua means jehoshua yes jesus but i am not jesus of nazareth my father was not a carpenter and so I realized that I am an ambassador, not the Christ. So you must rest. One of the most comforting scriptures for me, because everything, once there's no scriptural backing, I don't believe it. It says, and God rested. Come on now. Not an angels, and God. Whether you call it sleeping, or season from work i know that at that period he didn't do anything do it he said let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus it's not just the mind to walk it's the mind to rest how many people go to hospitals today and doctors tell them honestly there's nothing wrong they say look i know what i'm the one feeling what is wrong they said there's nothing we've checked just rest and they go back and rest and they get up strong sleep is a mystery are you hearing what i'm saying sleep is a mystery god used it 
to do a lot of things you can still advance the kingdom even as you rest it was in adam's sleep that eve came it was in jacob's sleep that he had a dream it was in joseph's sleep that he had direction for where to run away with jesus sometimes after you have worshipped and run around sleep your way into the revelation that you wake up with and it will move you oh yes absolutely if jacob did not sleep he would never know that was the gate of heaven his senses were alive looking for breakthrough and sleep and he saw angels if sleep will give me an encounter i will sleep because i need it i need serious encounters this year if you don't see it when you are awake why don't you sleep eat well rest well your personal hygiene th that's all right your personal hygiene i won't talk much there i'm not a medical practitioner but i'm one who intends to live long listen listen take care of yourself and your personal hygiene please don't say it does not matter do not let the financial situation in your pocket reflect in your life and your body you live anyhow you wear clothes smelling sweat all around you don't care you just smell it and say is it too bad your neighbor smells and no no don't just laugh i have to say it i have the responsibility to say it i've told us about that bathing you do with three-quarter bucket somebody as tall as me you run and enter and while you are talking in less than one your phone is ringing before it finishes ringing five or six times you are out <laughs> my brother you didn't bath I, I assure you you didn't bath if that's what you have been doing it must change your health food that has spoiled your dear eat he said you are, I can still warm it if it has spoiled let it go we are still going to have miracle services but I'm saying we can minimize casualties for nothing hallelujah number four number four please write number four the fourth area finances god wants us to focus and experience multiplied grace deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 9 it's our year of multiplied grace and influence and that even in the area of finances very quickly deuteronomy 29 verse 9 i'd like us to read everyone please one to read what's the condition he said keep keep therefore keep these words of this covenant and he said do them he didn't just say keep them in your jot and leave them there he said do them practice them in truth he says that you must prosper write the following to guide us through our finances number one set clear financial goals set clear financial goals this year and work with the holy spirit to achieve them i want to be rich is a mirage you you'll never get blessed that way I want to be rich will never get you rich listen there is a mystery about writing and clarity the bible says, write the vision then it says make it plain what is your financial target don't, don't write foolish childish things i need one bill no 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 no. start gradually faith is not stupidity start gradually write something that is able to take you from where you are to the next level don't say how will it come leave that that's not your business you get frustrated when you are thinking of how it will come the bible says just like you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of how a child nor the way of the wind you don't know how the wind comes you don't know how a seed becomes bones in a child is that not a mystery that a woman carries a seed and within the space of nine months that seed becomes bones hard bones becomes teeth that can stay for for hundreds of years and not just disintegrate and leave that's a mystery he said that one leave it to god your job is to get the seed in the womb of the woman the remaining activity is god's work there are certain things about the equation of success you can never understand there is a mystery in it that is exclusive to the office of god 
trying to understand it will frustrate you brothers and sisters keep your own part and watch the miracle work out set clear financial goals what is your financial goal for this year as a ministry we have financial goals in my personal life i have financial goals you must set financial goals number two to experience that grace in your finances master the laws of favor and abundance master the laws that govern the release of favor and abundance favor is a law preachers have said favor happens anyhow is a lie is a lie favor it is the the dispensing of favor that happens automatically favor is initiated by exact spiritual laws that can be understood and reproduced it may take time see I'm human I know that it's not easy but I'm telling you if you master those laws you have built yourself out from this mess that is eating on the earth master the laws of favor you can get the teachings financial dominion part one to four and the wealthy place part one to four please make sure you get this teaching sit with them sit with them understand what god has said and then practice the laws do them he said now that you know these things he said happy are you when you do them you've got to do them you've got to do them the laws of tithing i want you to pay attention to four laws when it comes to giving this year your tithing please look up let me preach to you i want you to be determined this year that you are going to be faithful in tithing first and foremost because you love the lord and second because you want to activate the operation of the blessing in your life don't say i'm poor how much do i have how much do i give god that's your way out that's your way out never forget i already shared with us that your tithing is like a spiritual circumcision remember our teaching the wealthy place that your tithing is a spiritual circumcision that authorizes god to come and partner with you melchizedek the high priest received the tithe of abraham and did what he spoke the blessing over him and the bible says christ today is our melchizedek what was the office of melchizedek what was the function he received tithe and prophesied on the givers so jesus in that office of melchizedek receives your tithe and releases activates the blessing and i told you what the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit that attracts to your life people opportunities and resources that's the blessing it's like an electromagnetic field when it comes upon your life everyone that comes within that circumference is compelled to respond to you in another way it's like a charm when it is on you have you heard people call you and say i don't know god just put it in my mind to bless you listen nobody gets up and blesses another person just by default if you are waiting for that you are dreaming something must compel them it's an operation of god called the father of spirits i, I don't want to start there are loaded messages for this year i don't want to go ahead of myself praise the lord there is a very extensive curriculum that will stretch you this year until you step into that dimension of grace very very important the father of spirits god gave me the revelation remember i taught us in james i think 226 or so he says for as the body without the spirit anything you do just from the flesh realm without a spirit component cannot work that business without the spirit will die your family without the spirit will die he said for the body without the spirit is dead so you must pay attention to practicing these laws when people in the shrine want to kill a man how do they do it they leave the man snoring in his room and use some enchantments is that true they invoke the spirit of that man you see it in nigerian films right and he appears that man is sleeping he's not even aware they called forth his spirit and separated it from his body and the spirit appeared in the shrine and then they gave the spirit instruction from today become unfaithful are we together from today become poor it's a programming 
upon his spirit and then the spirit returns to the body and the helpless body gets up and becomes a slave to prophecy it was not aware of that's the same way god operates he's called the father of spirits he can summon any spirit and give them instructions on your behalf so men don't know why they are just thinking about you and they say the lord led me venga the lord led me to show you ten thousand another person said ten thousand people say you are lucky no you are not lucky there is a spiritual climate responsible for that result this year force yourself to get it i must step into that climate that compels men i returned into this city i think two days ago as i was stepping in not even many people knew that i i, I think aside from the protocol not many people knew that i was around as soon as i arrived it was like a force that started compelling people apostle sir are you around i have a little gift for you someone brought hamper someone brought this and i said this thing works it's not about announcing oh, 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 oh. hands on your head in one minute and prophesy and say i'm breaking the back of poverty this year please pray i sensed an anointing that's why i was telling us to pray lay your hands on your head and prophesy it's a year of multiplied grace multiplied grace influenced by the spirit access to uncommon resources those outside make sure you are praying i will wipe the tears of my family this year what they could not do i'm about to arise god who had commanded light to shine out of darkness light to shine out of obscurity. Hallelujah. Psalm one one two, please, very quickly. Psalm one one two. Psalm 112. Four areas I want you to focus on. Under finances. One is your tithing. Please be determined this year. That you are going to be serious. Discipline yourself. Don't think it's a gimmick by men of God. Don't listen to those nonsense that newspapers carry around. Castigating men of God. Yes, I know that there are people who are driven whose God is their belly. But please, the mere existence of error does not mean you throw the baby and the bad water together. Don't stand. The Bible says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the, the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He said, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commands. Verse 2. Let's hurry up, media help us. His seed shall be mighty. That's influence upon the earth. He says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3. I'd like you to read it and take it as a prophecy for your life. One to go. He says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure it forever. Wealth and riches. Wealth and riches. Wealth and riches wealth and riches shall be in his house like the ark of god came upon the house of Oben edom and he began to prosper within three months Oben edom's life changed just because the ark came upon
upon his house. Your worship offerings don't come to the house of God empty handed. See, let me tell you. Let me tell you why many of us seem to be stranded in terms of having an offering to give or a worship offering. Because you are not a sower. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. If you say, oh God, please, I don't want to come to your house just like that. Believe me, God gives seed to the sower. But you think when you hold that money, you are coming to give a man of God to enrich the man. No, I've told you, any man that truly fears God does not live off the resources of his members. He lives off his obedience to kingdom principles. It's a terrible thing to depend on your members to bless you. You are tied to their mood swings. The day they are ready to bless you. No. Let me trust God for myself. And believe in him as Jehovah Jireh. Your seeds of honor. I've shown you the mystery of sowing upwards. Look at me. When you sow downwards, you walk in divine health. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't sow downward to step into prosperity. You sow downwards to create a track record that will speak for you in the day of obscurity. But when you want to step into a level, you sow upwards. You must learn this. Don't sow carelessly. Don't just look around. You are not a habali. Say, go and see beggars on the street and give five beggars money and your life will change. Please, we are not practicing shamanism. This is Christianity. Are we together? You must learn God's principles. Seeds of honor. Find people that carry graces and levels that you desire. So in, we call it sowing into an anointing. You are sowing into an anointing and it authorizes you to step into that possibility. Learn this. Learn this. Learn to sow into anointings that will lift you into that level. You must practice this consistently this year. finally kingdom building i call it kingdom investment bishop oyedebo used to shout this and say it with all his heart kenneth copeland would shout this again listen i'm telling you when you commit yourself to kingdom projects it will amaze you how god will step into your life how god will step into your life kingdom building is to find a need in the house of god and participate actively in meeting that need i want to encourage you this year that you must commit yourself find needs in the body of christ workers your departments someone can sit down and say ah koinonia needs a work clock three of us let's come together and buy for the house not joshua selman and you commit and God is watching you and you authorize increase in your life the Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth." he said there is he that withholdeth more than his meat I want to ask you a question did the body of Christ benefit from your resources last year that that may explain why you are where you are financially may God never give me any money that his house will not benefit in I say it again may it never come to me any money that comes into my life that the house of God cannot benefit in is a cost to me I'm sharing with you very deep secrets that can open your heavens there are times that people bring seeds all kinds of seeds and while I'm excited God says uh -uh, this seed is for the house of God quietly with Jesus joy not grudgingly saying God said you God is faithful was it yesterday or day before yesterday I was rejoicing someone sent the seed into my account I was smiling and the Lord told me internet transfer straight this ministry that ministry God you are faithful you won't destroy me if I die I die in your hands Off it goes. let your finances be so flexible like Dr. Mike Murdoch will say that God can do business with you. I was discussing with a prof last year, one, one of our daddies in Area A, and he spoke to me. He said, son, 
tell the Lord you want to be his treasurer. Ah, that's, that statement resonated in my head. That man sat me down and started discussing with me his work with God from childhood and how God had been faithful in his life and in his old age. He said, ask the Lord that he should make you his treasurer. Do you know what it means for God to make you his treasurer? Oh, God, make me your treasurer in 2016. Can God trust you with heaven's resources? Do you have the flexibility to release it when he makes demands? It's my own. It's my money. I worked for it. It's my sweat. No. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God because you can forget. Thou shalt remember the Lord your God. He said, for it is he that giveth thee power. Please give your way out of poverty this year. Sow your way out of poverty this year. Number five, this is the last one, and we'll pray. Relationships. I want you to pay attention to this, especially those outside. Please pay very close attention to what I'm saying. I want you to invest this year. Invest in godly and healthy relationships. Do you know the reason why doors never open for many of us? We don't have helpers in our lives. There's nobody you have honored enough to remember you in the days of adversity. There are people who don't have money but they never lack. There is always someone they can cry to. They honor somebody who remembers them in the days of pain. Listen, money is not everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe me, money is very important but money is not everything. Educate yourself enough to know that money does not do everything hallelujah went to the bank today with the protocol to collect my 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 atm my card had expired and i was going to collect it and one two one two I'm sure maybe one or two of them may even be here one two one two they just made things happen for us and within minutes we're out of that place the power of relationships relationships will give you what money cannot give you relationship will give you hectares of land that you don't have money to get are you hearing what i'm saying relationship will give you things there are people today who can stay in somebody's rented apartment and never pay because of relationship if you have to pay for everything in life is dangerous it will kill you relationships the key to relationship is honor and friendliness when you make people feel like idiots around you you will pay for it in the days to come are we together all that big man is him i'm a big man i'm this and that no you must learn to relate with people. hallelujah ada is here many of you may not know him they were part of what aaron calls first second generation dna that's him there he came around this guy used to wash my clothes cook for me he did this almost every day that was his work oh. believe me when i tell you this he was married until he got married and he left do you think i'll ever forget him i would drop my last penny to see that he smiles he's called blessed by association how many of you remember that teaching he and i those days blessed by association I taught on the mystery on how people can enjoy the sweat of others because they have learned to connect. The Bible says, God told Abraham to go out. He said, and Lot went with him. Just by going with Abraham, he was implicated. Be blessed. It's called blessed by association. Who do you know today that can speak for you in high places? Don't say it does not matter. I learned this from my dad my dad has mastered the art of keeping relationships he knows almost everybody somewhere if it's military there must be a soldier that is his friend police there must be somebody that's a powerful life they take you to police station there's somebody who can advocate for you not to leave you to die there you are going to the court there is somebody who can speak for you 
I pray for you. May God raise people this year that in any area there will be voices that will speak for you. Listen, we suffer needlessly in life because we have money but we do not have voices that speak for us. There's a business proposal. There are five of you having it. You have all the qualifications but you neglected relationships. Somebody you used to know who can now speak for you. You are anointed, but you ignored it. Because we pastors told you it's not important. Just pray and serve God. No. Connect with people. You don't connect with people because they are perfect. Connect with them now. Before it becomes... Every day makes it more expensive to connect. Connect and have a testimony that you drank Gary together. Right? And you will be able to partake of their bounty. Destiny help us. You must look for these people and pray them into your life. Remember the Bible talk, it talks to us about Naaman. We talk a lot about Naaman but we forget the little maid who encouraged him. You know it was a little slave girl. She said there is a prophet. Please talk to the king to allow you. She persuaded him. And he went to Elisha. Elisha said go and bath. And he was angry. He said are there no other beautiful pools? And the lady begged him. When she pleaded with him, he went to bath. And his destiny changed connect with people don't ignore people this year and say this one cannot speak english we are the committee of beautiful girls we are the committee of of those who have with one we are the handsome guys we are the ones who are this we are the ones who are intelligent we are the ones who work in banks we are the business moguls that spirit cast it out this year in the mighty name of jesus christ learn to connect with people you don't know who is who. This world is a very small world. Very, very small world. I've gone to places and I've been amazed at people who I used to know and how they have been of tremendous help. You go somewhere and you are supposed to struggle and go through certain things and they facilitate it for you. When my international passport expired, one of our, he's a general, he's a, a, a chairman board of, of trustees. He went to, you know, just with his influence. I mean, this is a general now. This man drove me in his car by himself with army uniform. And I came up. People thought I was a general, so I was just smiling. <laughs> oh, this year, may you hang on somebody's success and smile through it. It mustn't always be your own. You can smile your way through relationships. If they say yes you are just a parasite no problem at least i'm moving forward and he went there when the woman saw the way he was running around he just told me sit down i was embarrassed frankly he was running around doing everything and um, within 30 minutes my passport was uh, was ready something they anyway follow the protocol life is in stages don't go and force people in passport office and they throw you out and jail you but the point is, the woman looked at him and I prayed with her. Then, I think it was last year or year before last, we went to minister in uh, the Nigerian immigration, the, the immigration service in, in Abuja, their chapel. We now went to minister there and after I was done, I was greeting the people. Guess who I saw? That madam. She had been shifted. I looked at her and I said, ah, mommy, how are you? She was greeting me. She said, oh, I knew there was something about you. And I connected, I greeted her so well so that if my passport expires again, <laughs> learn how to maintain relationships. See, listen, please, we are, we, are, we are praying now. I'm teaching you secrets that will really put you on top. There are people who don't have money, but they will never cry. You won't see their tears. There is always somebody. There is always somebody. Hallelujah. What has been your outlook about relationships? People in the world know how to keep this relationship. Have you seen somebody go to drink? No money. Yet he goes to the beer parlor. He even invites an wife. Is it not this joint? Immediately he enters. Ah, oh, got lucky. How are you there now? And sits down. Give him 10 minutes. Somebody he knows will come in. And he says, bros, no deal, no deal. And they just say, Abba, serve him. And he would drink and argue about football and argue about everything, add pepper soup to it, belts and go back home. No money, but he had a capital called relationships. 
Hold the hands of your neighbor. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to say it again one more time. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. May your life never be such that you will go in the midst of people who you used to know, but there is nobody to help you. May that never be your testimony in Jesus' name. Please invest in healthy relationships. I'm telling you this. Invest in people are the conduits for miracles. Somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who can wipe your tears. It's amazing to see how close to are, how close you are to your miracle if you can just know who leads you there. Learn how to walk and live with people. That's the second point on that relationships. Hold on, Mike. Just pause. I want everybody to listen to what I want to say. Learn how to live and walk with people. The Bible says, he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. Please, you must learn how to live with people. Many of us are Christians, but we don't know how to live with people. Let me tell you what we want. A friend is not somebody who is you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A friend may be somebody who has similar ideologies, but it cannot be you. There are many of us, the only person who can relate with you is another you. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. That you are a friend to people does not mean that they don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean they are perfect in themselves. There are many of us, the lifespan of our friendship is three days. You must fight with somebody. And it's not necessarily an issue of demonic attack. It's just wisdom. You don't understand. Expect disappointment from friends. I don't say expect it in a negative way. I'm saying make room for it. Incorporate it as part. Expect betrayal. Expect anything and let it not surprise you when it happens. God can bring the greatest gold in your life in an imperfect vessel. If you know how to look beyond the flaws of men, you will find treasures in them that will change your life. I don't like this lady. She's a jealous lady, but she's intelligent. And you need her intelligence. Why don't you ignore the jealousy? Are we together? I don't like this man. He's arrogant, but he's anointed. Why don't you quietly let him ignore the arrogance and open up your destiny and go? I don't like this woman. She's too pompous, but she has access to those you need. Please learn how to walk with people i've taught us here but let me repeat for those who have come the highest psychological need of any man this is the key to friendship the lord taught me this the highest psychological need of any man alive is the need to feel loved to feel valued and to feel appreciated never forget this leaders incorporate this as you walk with people pastors incorporate this the extent to which comes some the extent to which I make Sam feel loved and valued is the extent to which we become friends. Are we together? That does not mean I cannot rebuke him. That does not mean I cannot talk to him. But that he knows fundamentally that even when I rebuke him, I love him truly from my heart. Thank you, Sam. Are we together? Learn to make people feel comfortable around you. Don't fight people for sustaining ideologies that are different from you. You are not a member of this church. So don't come near me. We are the group of this. No, we are not a member of this. Your belief is this. You are from which church? I don't believe in your pastor. Okay, believe in the person. Relationships. God taught me this. I have seen it in my life. There are few things I pay for in my life. I am telling you this. And it's not because I'm a man of God. There are few things, those who walk close to me know. There are few things I pay for in this life. There is always somebody somewhere and it's just a call away. Do you know how you can help people? Influence is all about connecting with people that gives you access to platforms. Platforms. 
there are places i minister today i never i never would be able to minister but on the strength of healthy relationships there are people god has brought into my life today who will die to see me do well i mean die they will give their lives literally to see me do well do you have such people in your life if you don't have it you are poor if you don't have it you are poor invest in god don't just be bragging around and making people feel bad and you are moving around and looking at, no 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 the person you reject today will rise up faster than you ever imagined and let me tell you something you can change the future but you cannot change history people have memories like elephants you do something wrong after 10 years they will haunt you they don't know whether you have been born again in that 10 years or you've rededicated your life to christ they just say and see this stupid girl i remember her inside is she not the one she's the one and you are coming you are born again you are even a pastor now or a pastor's wife but carelessness of the past will haunt you and you will have to start explaining yourself no i've changed i know i was bad before use the opportunity now little things like fighting over seats to insulting people gossiping about people god is watching your destiny too is watching you must make sure you are friends to people everywhere i go i try to make the people feel honored i greet them have you learned something tonight relationships you want to see multiplied grace let there be multiplied relationships godly relationships you have to honor people you get up in the morning you greet your roommates good morning don't get up and say see if not for condition i won't be in this state you are not my mate at all you are not even my younger brother see please leave all those things don't use age to intimidate anybody you get up you greet, and you when they greet you you reciprocate you don't sit down and say uh -huh. how are you good morning all this living your life to yourself i cook my food by myself i don't share with anybody i go to the market by myself you will leave destiny by yourself and that's when you will know how painful it is to ignore people you can have all the money but no access over three people called me today three people called me today to send names for jobs i don't need it three people i'm, I'm serious three people called me today and said ah there's there are some federal government jobs that are opening do you have a few people i said ah yes so i have people i said okay this one will give you one slot this one hurry up and do this it's called influence it's called influence that's what politicians do one letter can wipe your tears this is how miracles happen i'm teaching you wisdom you see me dwelling on this point because many of us have ignored relationships ignored relationships there are certain people that come from other university campuses and other places they come here and i see them i mark their face sometimes when i go around their regions to minister as people are trying to see me I, I look at their face and i say i remember are you not the one that did this bought me what they say yes sir. and i say no 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 let this guy come follow us to our hotel room access i see him looking at his friends i paid the price i came and now i have to go may god give you influence this year yeah. access to people quality people in the name of jesus christ yeah. hallelujah in the name of jesus christ access to people what you are looking for is in the hand of somebody don't look for that thing look for a relationship with him you will have access to it does a wife a, a good husband and a good wife does the wife really have to say sorry do i have a share in your inheritance all she did was what he got married to her and he also partakes of it stop looking for people's money look for relationships that's why many of us never get blessed you come to a rich man and you are eyeing you just hear making a call say eh, okay transfer 15 add five to it and you're like ah we are in the right place don't allow that attitude to cheat you this year listen I do my possible best to build relationship with people above money i have met millionaires i have met billionaires god is my witness i've never opened my mouth to say give me one naira not because i may not need it you kill relationships unnecessarily 
when your motive is revealed to be wrong so pay the price it's not easy but as much as it's within your power focus on relationship not this there are people who come and meet a man of god they don't want relationship they just want anointing man of god i've heard of all the things you are doing and i need the same result and then they kneel down and raise one envelope they say i came with this as if I, you know you almost feel like telling them my brother please stand up and walk away because he would think something came upon him but nothing really happened it's just that sometimes when they disturb you you just do it so they will go but you and god know that nothing really happened relationship elijah had the sons of the prophet but elisha followed him and established a relationship finally how to walk in the prophetic world there are two laws i want you to never forget number one is the law of encounter it's changed my life i've taught us jeremiah 29 13 he says and ye will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart he says and ye shall seek me and find me is one powerful law that has worked in my life encounter is what births transformation when you encounter god when you encounter a dimension of him it will speak in your life please respect the law of encounter press for his presence press for his presence press for his presence allow people to run around and move around but stay I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting on you Lord I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting on you seek God with all your heart this year be be addicted to his presence don't just do it as a koinonia thing I told you God said tell them to give me time when you give God time, he will reveal his glory in your life. Number two, the law of honor. This is the key for impartation. Honor. Honor. Let me talk for two minutes on honor. Hebrews 7 verse 7 says, And without contradiction, the lesser, listen, God has already designed his system. The lesser is blessed of the greater every dimension you want to enter is somebody's current experience if you know how to honor your way you will honor your way cheaply into anointings honor is so powerful it can bring the harvest of somebody into your life hallelujah i'm a product of many anointings i have mastered the law of honor you must learn this learn this honor your way into unbelievable dimensions of grace honor your way into people's lives honor your way into their anointings honor the house of god the bible says honor all men it says honor the king when you have that attitude of honor i'm telling you the sky will only be a starting point for you this year i've made up my mind to honor every grace i come across genuinely and truthfully that's why we provide buses it's a symbol of honor we spend a lot there but we will never stop because it's a seed of honor i don't know what graces you carry it's a privilege to be a preacher but it does not mean i am better than you there are people carrying graces here that i probably am praying for when i'm able to honor you by helping out to take you to your destination it's a seed of honor that will bring impartation is a big secret in this ministry you honor people first from your heart not just through money money is important but the the principal way of honor is to esteem a man and esteem the grace he carries truly both the person and the office he represents not just office the person and the office 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. There are many platforms that are available this year to bless us. The koinonia services are there. The school of ministry is there. The forms will be out immediately during the announcement. We will announce it right this night. The forms will be out. There are many platforms. Plunge into it. Don't be half-hearted. You will be cheated. If you are staying, plunge yourself and see what God does in your life. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Please participate in the prayer because there is a prophecy that I want to release on us. Lift up your voice and thank the Lord for this word. Supernatural grace. Multiplied grace. Multiplied grace. Multiplied grace. Lift your voice inside and outside. Bless the Lord Almighty, the God of the heavens and the earth. Bless Him. It's a good year for the body of Christ. It's a good year for the body of Christ. It's a good year for Koinonia by the Spirit of the Living God. Mando protocosco preta catele poco to presca de bala da bala da bala da bala da bala. Shekata preca tele poco ya da bala ba. Hallelujah. Just three prayer points quickly. Prayer point number one. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I receive your word and I will run with it this year. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord, I receive it. I receive your word as a believer. I receive your word. Sheka bakata la poko soto preach. Mande kala cross kada bread na kapari adabash. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, we receive your word. Shembre tos koto prakata balarabash. But I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. I am persuaded that He is able. He is able. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Lord, make me addicted to your presence this year. That I will seek you. I will seek your word. I will seek prayer. I will seek your presence. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, shake it. Lord, I seek you this year like never before. Like never before. I seek you with all my heart, all my might, all my soul. Pray. Revival to my prayer life. Revival to my word study life. Give me encounter, so God. Supernatural visitations this year. Dreams, visions, encounters with the power of the Holy Ghost that will take me to a new dimension in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Lord, this year will be a year of results. 
I must hold on to tangible evidences. Lift your voice. Results. This must be a year of results. Outside, are you praying? This must be a year of results. There must be proofs in my life. There must be evidences in my life. Miracles, signs, wonders, the demonstration of the power of God, the demonstration of the word of God in my life, in my ministry, pray, in my business, in my education, in my family. There must be results in 2016. There must be results in the name of Jesus. There must be results in the name of Jesus. There must be results. In the name of Jesus, there must be results. In the name of Jesus, there must be results. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see it. When men see, there is a level of notable results. You can argue all kinds of things, but you can't argue results. It says that they may glorify your Father in heaven. The last prayer point. Listen, please, I want you to pray this with all your heart. Father, connect me to influential relationships this year. Just pray what I'm asking you to pray. Lift your voice. Connect me to men of influence across different strata. Men who will allow me ride on their success. Men who will allow me ride on their anointings. Men who will allow me ride on their influence. Men who will endorse me. Pray. Shekete koto sekete. Oh, send thou help to Zion, O great one. In the name of Jesus, send thou help to your people. Supernatural connections that will give you in one day the labor of other people's lifetime. Men of influence in every mountain. Men of influence in the government. Men of influence in finance men of influence in the educational realm oh god that in every area raise men to stand for me raise men to speak for me raise men to advocate for me make my life easy this year pray make my life easy this year as i serve you let there be ease in my life I rise upon the influence of many. I rise upon the strength of quality relationships, on common access, on common doors, on common resources, on common encounters. Hallelujah. Please, when you go back, I'd like all of you to listen to two teachings. Activating, I mean, um, activating breakthroughs. 
the ministry of destiny help us listen to it again no matter how many times you've listened to it and then listen to activating seasons of greatness sit on that teaching and cry your heart unto god hallelujah i want to prophesy over your life please i want you to believe it believe it many of us ignore the power of prophecy to our detriment listen you don't god created provision you don't have to struggle your way by yourself there are people that have been put strategically to help you you can reject the help to your detriment there are people who have traveled far and near there are whole families in this place travel distances and hours just to come some of you are within reach yet you will not open up your heart don't let people come and receive their blessings and go back and you are there just make up your mind the bible said by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt he said by a prophet they were preserved it's not human worship There may be exaggerations here and there, but it does not mean prophecy is powerful. It can frame your reality. Please, I want you to believe it. Prophecy is very powerful. This is the crux of the meeting tonight because it will give you direction. Listen, let me tell you how prophecy works. Look up. I know our time is gone, but let me just use one example. Come, anybody. Prophecy is like a charm. Listen, when it is spoken, it leaves as i'm speaking it's like a charm it comes upon you and creates an effect it makes things that should not have happened happen listen i told you the most superior the, of dimension of the prophetic is not the revelatory dimension the creative dimension of the prophetic is the most superior dimension the revelatory dimension is important it gives you direction and views faith but the creative dimension is what is responsible for creating your reality i prophesied as i was commanded he said and there was a sound it's not like the sound was wrong it was never there prophecy called it prophecy calls things that be not as though they are lift your hands as i speak over your life Father, let there be results in the name of Jesus. In the name that is above all names, I speak unto you. An unusual anointing that will step you into encounters with the Holy Ghost. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. Listen. A dimension of unction that you have never functioned in in the name that is above all names I prophesy that this year you will ride upon a river an unction that will take you to superior levels in the spirit oh I command it to be so in the spirit I command it to be so in the spirit I pray for you the mark of favor that can come upon a man and produce uncommon access in the name that is above all names may that mark come upon your life right now i prophesy to you may that mark come upon your life right now may that mark come upon your life right now listen honor is an anointing there is an anointing that can come upon a man and make him honorable he says and Jabez was more honorable that anointing that makes men honorable i release it upon you right now or oh, in 2016 receive that anointing for honor uncommon honor god will position men to celebrate your grace they will appreciate you they will sow into your grace
I pray for you this year. May the spirit of revelation, illumination and insight into the mysteries and the oppression of the kingdom, I release it upon you right now. Oh, eyes to see, eyes to see. I release it upon you. Uncommon dimension of access to spiritual realities. I release it upon you like a mantle in the name of the Lord Jesus. My goodness, there are strange impartations, strong impartations that are happening to people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I release impartations of this unction, the spirit of revelation, strange levels of access in the spirit. I open to you fountains, fountains of light in the spirit. I open you up to mysteries. I open you up to mysteries in the name of Jesus. I open you up to mysteries, strange operation of mysteries. hallelujah hear me every person who you must connect to to rise wherever they are is called a year of multiplied influence i'm prophesying to you please believe me from the north to the south the east and the west every anointing every grace you must connect to to rise I release access to you in the name of Jesus. Access to people. Access to anointings. Access to opportunities. In the name of Jesus. Oh, connect with influential people. I release that anointing upon you. Receive it. Connect to influential people. Receive it right now. Influence. Influence. I stand upon this apostolic office. And I prophesy supernatural influence. Connect to people in government. Connect to people everywhere. In the name of Jesus. They will listen to you when you speak. They will rise up to help you. Rise up for you. Every door that refused to open in 2005 in the name of Jesus under this multiplied grace we compel that door to open in the name of Jesus every door that refused to open every obstacle that refused to let you go right now in the name of Jesus I command that door open now open now hear me I prophesy to your loved ones this year we force results in your family hear me again this year we command results in your family may the angel that has been assigned to koinonia the angels that have been dispatched to honor this prophetic word may they go to every family and begin to cause the word of god to come alive Listen, some of you, it will not reach 24 hours. Your result will start coming. Believe me, it will not reach 24 hours. Your results will start coming. Dramatic results. Listen, Koinonia, you will hear testimonies this year that will make you afraid. People will come and stand here and you will think they are lying because of the breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless the work of your hands this year. May an anointing come upon it. In the name of Jesus. For students I pray. A level of grace and ease. That you have never seen. A level of superior intelligence. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. 
Listen, this is the year of Jubilee, and I prophesy to you the opening of gates to every age long challenge, prophetically and even historically. This is the season of Jubilee, and in the season of Jubilee, you let go captives. I command every captivity in this season of Jubilee, it must let you go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Take God seriously more than ever before. Begin to press into God. You've been coming for Koinonia. You are not a worker in any department. Locate a department and set up and commit yourself. Commit yourself to prayer. Commit yourself to the, to the word. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these ones. They have unashamedly come. The Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father, Jesus speaking. Lord, these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace. I ask you, oh God, you who is the helper of us all, help them. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you. The grace to live a victorious Christian life. The grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. I congratulate every one of you. Now, listen, I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ. There are a number of you, those in here, I just want you to walk out this way. And then the various overflows, I know that there are people attending to them. They will have your details, appraise you very quickly, and you return back to join us in the service. I salute you. Thank you so much for your courage. Your life will never be the same. God bless you. Please direct them. Make sure someone is directing them. Make sure someone is directing them. Hallelujah. Amen. Please sit down. Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings. I really believe with all my heart. And, and it's been confirmed from different people, seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth. Number one is the healing ministry. I believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry. It's true. Even some of us that supposedly walk in it, the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry. The healing ministry. I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray. We'll get to the business of the night. The healing ministry is very important. It played a major role. The challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes. Because the healing ministry is a means, is a sign that points men to Jesus. It's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry, you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself. The second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance. It's true. This wealth transfer that you've heard people say, I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um, is just 
a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful. There is a place for that, but if that is the scope of your idea, then you do not need any wealth transfer. Are we together? Yes. So God must first walk upon our hearts. It's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria. Angelic feathers, gold dust, silver dust. You know, people started having these strange encounters. And one, I remember one night the Lord told me, he said, I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry. It didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn. People will go to pray and for hours, all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality. And God said, no, if I don't take it away, one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so God will not release it until the body is taught. The money is safer with Bill Gates. It's safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors. Because they have worked on their minds. They are better treasurers for God than us. So all, it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming. But not, not some money monger kind of thing. It won't come that way. Anyway, I just thought to share that. Let's look at the ministry of Jesus. Luke chapter 6. I study the Gospels a lot because the ministry of Jesus inspires me. He's the greatest model that I have. And I like to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay I'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him they came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for jesus's meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of god so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the bible says and the whole multitude listen sought to touch him why for there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would lead him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Acts chapter 10 when you read verse 38 Peter was teaching that was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 
with the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good. Went about doing good. So we see other things that Jesus did that were not captured. He didn't just heal the sick alone. He didn't just deliver the oppressed alone. He went about doing good. Breakthrough is a good thing. Restoration is a good thing. He went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry and, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the spirit himself without measure. So that we can partake of that spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results at some point in this service we should see the superiority of light over darkness is that true at some point in this service god should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me, brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time and we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service, because you have not just come to watch a man, you have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough. Did you hear what I said? You're leaving your house to come is faith enough. It's true. Like a patient goes to the hospital. Once you are in the hospital, just leave the rest to the doctor. Then the doctor begins to prescribe. And this is what is happening to us. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. Let's look at one scripture. Mark chapter 1, 21. Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum still the ministry of Jesus and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how Jesus held his crusade he would take out time not just to preach but to teach Jesus knew that 
teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is. You share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell. So well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28 
and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Now Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that? And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact. The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand. And brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now. They brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her something made that uncle call brothers and sisters because that uncle also has relatives somewhere everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him what makes him to leave them and come to you no are we blessed one question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray are you truly tired of the situation you see there's something 
I think I was sharing with, I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain. Don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils. Listen carefully. I expect that tonight by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities. Lack of favor. Delay. There are some of us who are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years. Whoever told you it cannot. You heard the lady that said they stole her phone. They came with machete and stole her phone. I remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a machete. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate. That's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. This is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? But with God. With God. All things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone Jesus said, I'm not alone. All these miracles you see, I'm being assisted. Brothers and sisters, the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance. The realm of the spirit is in partnership. You can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside, shouting at overflow. No, no. Habba. Words are not hammer. But when the spirit is upon them, that word will enter you like a drug. And all of a sudden, you will find out that certain things will go. <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping. Um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. 
Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick, get ready to be healed. Don't, don't, don't say, well, let's watch and see. Get ready to be healed. You are oppressed of the devil. You may not even know you are oppressed. You just know that nothing is working in your life. I want you to be tired and say, God, will you bring me here? So especially for those of you who came so far, Lord, will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that? There are some of you in ministry, you came to contact fire. Lord, will you leave me? Will I leave my members, my fellowship and come back here and go back? No evidence of favor. I believe him. I believe that he's a mighty man. I believe he's awesome. I have seen his hand. I have seen his power. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the same God yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same healer yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same deliverer. I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight. I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men. The one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life. I present to you the prosperer. The one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence. Can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech. We're about to step back and allow the King of Glory ride over this place. And let me watch the mountain that stands before him. Let me watch Zerubbabel. Oh, no, no. He said, Who art thou, mountain? Who art thou, mountain? Who art thou, infirmity? Who art thou, delay? Who art thou, stagnation? Before Zerubbabel, he said, Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace, I'm about to pray, for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three and those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor step into a new level of favor Step into a new level of favor. Step into a new level of favor. Step into a new level of favor. Step into a 
a new level of favor. Step into a new level of favor. We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve. I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor. Favor that will surprise you. Favor that will accelerate your life. When a life, listen to me, when a life has no favor, it is clear. The proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life. Not the absence of money. You can have money. You can have intellect. You can have a job. But when there are no men in your life, you don't have favor. The proof of favor is not the coming of money. The proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that the men that will show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, that anointing that must come on you, I declare that it comes on your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Producing strange results. It comes upon your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Just follow me. Some of you don't know how you need favor. You know you need favor, but you don't know what extent. I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor. You will never be able to be happy on earth. No. I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard 
can you help me with some money and i looked at him i said you are not a wise gentleman i know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor i said let's do an experiment i told him i said i will pray for you for favor return next friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens i will give you money agreed he said yes and i prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on monday monday that's the monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can i pray that prayer for you again in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled is almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor may your life change by favor receive the grace for favor it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir did not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think I pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor I command it to be open now I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings. Let me tell you the truth. It's not in today's Nigeria. You're not going to buy a car by saving. No. I practice all these things. You're not going to, to settle and train your children just by saving money. You will need a grace that can accelerate your results. Otherwise, you will never be a giver. You will never. You can't be a giver just by saving peanuts, 10 naira and 100 naira. When there is a demand, life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor, you will be frustrated. And that's how Satan wants to trap men. He will trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family Listen, sometimes eh, it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make boasts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family 
and dislodge everybody who wants to be God in that family. Hallelujah. Favor. In one minute, I want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak. Lift your voice. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Participate. Lord, I release favor concerning this job. Pray. I release favor. I release favor. Favor concerning my building project. I release favor. Are you praying? Favor. You surround us with favor like a shield. You surround us with favor like a shield. like a sheep. Favor in my academics, pray. Favor over my job. Lord, favor, favor, favor. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water what, that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this Many of us, what happens is that we're mistaking goodness for favor. Someone just appears once and just says, look, I want to help you. And it never happens again. When it is favor, a process is ignited. It keeps following like that. It's true. Study the things in your life. You'll be able to separate goodness from favor. There are things that just happen one time. But favor, favor continues. So I'm seeing fire on my hands. And I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you are on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are, it's a mystery. It says, the, the hand of God, it was with this hand God made man. Are we together now? This hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things 
to give us rest so we can serve him why does God open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away your prayer life becomes worship not just hours of petition in the flesh hallelujah hallelujah overflow two there's someone the anointing of the spirit is coming on someone overflow two the overflow by the roadside bring the lady hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done overflow to the overflow by the road please quickly we have to hurry up thy kingdom come thy will be done Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come, thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 A new season.
Someone is entering it right now. A new season. A new season. Young lady, you are entering a new season. A new season by the Spirit. A new season. 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 Something is breaking. Breaking. I don't need to walk everywhere. I'm just walking as the Holy Ghost is leading me. A new season. Something is breaking. 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 A new season. There is a cloud of glory. There is a cloud of glory. A new season. No force can stand it in your life. There is an anointing here. There is an anointing here. A new season. Something is breaking here. Right now in the name of Jesus. Something is breaking here in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Something is leaving you. Something is leaving you. It must go. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Shake it, take it, take it. And take a name of New season. New season. I stretch my hand. Something is breaking here. There's someone an anointing is coming on you. Breaking a limitation right now. In the name of Jesus. that spirit leave that lady now in the name of Jesus from me and it will come and create that separation I want you to bring them out overflow one two three wherever in the mighty name of Jesus the God of Jeshurun I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one two three Let them go now. Let them go now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Embrekentos kotobata. Witchcraft. Manipulations of darkness. In the name of Jesus. I command a separation. Through the greatness of thy power. Shall thy enemies submit. I decree. I set it as an ordinance in the spirit. I announce liberty. Liberty, bring them out.
name of Jesus Christ if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three I command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family covenanted to the waters covenanted to the air to trees I set you free now hallelujah the Lord is showing me a map and I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty Complete liberty. Complete liberty. Overflow three. Please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry. You, you, they, you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three. Overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus. Because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough. Massive deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, overflow three, are you ready? I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you. Right now in the name of Jesus, everyone under any kind of oppression, at the count of three, shout Jesus, one, two, three. hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please i want to pray the lord is showing me something that is very interesting the lord wants to break cycles there are people every season certain things happen every september somebody must die every 3 3 years somebody married must divorce in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles, demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do. One, two, get ready. Three. The chain of circles. Be broken. Cycles. Cycles of failure. Cycles of miscarriages. Cycles of unfruitfulness. By the sound of the spirit. Be broken now. Hallelujah. Be broken now. I want to pray. 
um, please, this man, I don't know who the, this man, yes, please quickly, we are soon going to pray for the sick, I may not have time to prophesy to individuals, I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake, this is what I see in the name of Jesus, I curse that devil, I'm not seeing a human being, I'm seeing a snake, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir i want to pray for you i don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i traveled before that so i have not been coming. i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you. Huh? Yes, uh, is that true? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you. Yes, sir. That thing is a charm. Yes, it's sir. not half, it's charm. Yes, Native yes. doctor. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, That's sir. what will even kill you. Yes, sir. It's not going to solve your problem. Yes, sir. The people doing it are well meaning. Yes, sir. But the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it. Yes, and you violate it will destroy you. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? You have, you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you. Listen, let me tell you. When you are pressed, we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall. Going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction. If Satan gives you tea here, he will hold a knife and stab you at the back. Father, by the mercy of God, I pray for this man. Let him not die. In the name of Jesus, I close the gate of the grave over your life. In the name of Jesus, both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms, in the name of Jesus, we scatter that shrine into pieces. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, sir. The Lord perfects you. In Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not Agnes don't come here please name is Agnes where are you from I need to pray for you I'm seeing an attack on your life this attack is coming from Calabar huh are you hearing what I'm saying sir. I have to pray for you where are you from Cross River you are from Cross River yes sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai, there is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written, by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead, dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious
Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you. Eh? I love you. And that's why I'm telling you this. You need, you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing, but you have to be careful because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree. And that tree is this lady. And something that was planted. And the Lord is saying uproot it. I uproot this thing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot it now. The spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State. I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway, and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command an uprooting. Every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State Shekete Keta Katali Akata in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life very bad luck and the lord wants to help you father help your daughter in the name of jesus christ bad luck be gone now and forever in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ may the lord help you come my dear let me pray for you i'm about to pray for the sick now our time is gone in the name of jesus christ there are some my spirit is heavy to prophesy but because we have to i want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what i'm praying for you for i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the lord is saying i should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me i prophesy it over your life in the name of jesus christ who is this who agnes agnes where is she abuja abuja sir your sister yes Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this lady. Where is she? Abuja, sir. She loves Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her. Eh? In the name of... Is she married? Huh? In no. the name of uh, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God help you. Mama, come. Let me pray for you. It's your season of breakthrough. Come. Is this your child? come boy come i'm looking at this boy and i'm seeing that god is going to use him this is a small boy mm. boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but i'm going to pray for him samuel did not know that he would become a great prophet one day when eli he was just an innocent boy i'm going to pray for him mama please stand up i will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in Hausa Wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord. But 
this this cause of hardship um this woman loves the lord with all her heart father you what's what's the name of this boy Reba, huh? lifted okay your name is lifted yes father i lay hands on lifted in the name of jesus christ use him mightily we are all products of your grace lift him and use him mightily in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ mama i pray for you in the name of jesus christ and i'm telling you this the month of april is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of jesus christ the month of april is your month of breakthrough azuka come lift the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera i want to pray for you because i'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but god is bringing someone it's been something you have desired that god will bring someone to open a door and truth you have been faithful you have even been serving in this house but i want to pray for you lord in the name of jesus christ lift him take him to that dimension of grace i release that anointing upon you it will no longer be an ordinary camera i call forth men that will lift you i command it so i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please will be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus, someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus 
my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier beautifier you have taken away Taking away the pain Taking away the pain Make my life so Make beautiful life so beautiful My beautiful My beautiful You are taking, taking away the shame Taking away the pain Taking away the pain Make me just like you Make me just like you oh,
that I'm all in you. All in you, say my trust is in you. Uh -huh. Lay on up to die. My trust is in you. Hey, ancient of days. My trust is in you. Serkin to me. My trust is in you. Oh, I put them all in you. Like that man. 
February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus Lord as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge. Every challenge, every challenge. No matter what it is, I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, provided it found its way here, in the name of Jesus Christ, the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done but I just felt drawn again to it whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere may the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you it is the greatest thing I think I can do if I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God I may not be able to accurately address everyone but when it comes to prophecy everyone can receive are we together now wherever you are you can receive You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says, everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the...
the measure of grace. There are some things this anointing can do. And let's trust God that it happens in your life. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already, that from January, February, you've not known joy. I declare that as this week ends, that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too. The Bible says, no weeping endures for a night. It says, but joy comes with the morning. I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say lord i've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the god i serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting god for a better job in the name of jesus between now and march miracle service return with your miracle job Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay I command speed to your life I speak speed to your life I prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we correct it right here. Anyone here involved in any kind of project, building project, whatever major project, you or your loved ones, I decree and declare the finisher's anointing comes upon that project. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray over your finances. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. He said, believe in his prophets. So shall ye prosper. If you truly believe, God will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. I give you two weeks from today. In the name of Jesus Christ, that between now and the next 14 days, let something notable happen to your finances. Listen, I don't want you to think as I'm praying, you are thinking, oh God will use A, B. Leave whoever God will use to him. I'm not talking business. In the name of Jesus, I say it again. Between now and the next 14 days, may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances. Hallelujah. Every gift of the Spirit, that you had once seen in your life 
and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again i prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to god a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to jesus through you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through joshua selman in the name of jesus those hands that are stretched towards me i prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house i release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of jesus i speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of jesus christ whoever needs to make peace with you i decree and declare the grace of god compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by god to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying god is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of jesus the devil wants to stop them i clear the way for your contact with them in the name of jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if god does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious i pray that between now and sunday the god that i serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my god step in and surprise you We're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of jesus christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant i say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow i will do something then in the night something happens in the name of jesus everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand hallelujah finally i call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country i don't know how god will make them meet you but i declare they must meet you in the name of jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life 
whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight I stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of Jesus Christ give Jesus a clap Hallelujah. hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you